afternoon and welcome to my class this year for Advanced Steel and it's called Secrets Behind the Camera. My name is John Bennett and I work as a technical consultant for Greytech in the UK and also as a CSM for them. So my background, I've been working in the steel industry now for well over 30 years. I worked as a steelwork detailer, um, I've been a CAD manager, I've actually run my own fabrication company for a number of years. Um, all those sort of led to me coming to work into what's called the channel. Uh, I ended up working for, for Greytech uh, for, uh, uh, initially as an application engineer, I then moved to Autodesk for a few years and then I came back to Greytech as a CSM. And basically my primary role is um, customizing, implementing and training people in how to use advanced steel and also I do some work with Revit nowadays. So today's class sort of comes up all the time. Everyone I ever go and see how do I get some drawings out of this thing? Uh, everybody always asks me that. Um, depending on which country you're in there's different setups, different configurations different standards that you can get out of advanced steel. Uh, most of my work's been in uh, obviously the UK, North America, Australia, so the English based speaking languages and the main struggle is always to do uh, arrangement drawings and that's predominantly where I use a camera to achieve what I need. So to do this um, I looked into this and discovered that there were some ways to actually improve how this worked from the traditional method that I'd been taught years and years ago, which was just cutting views from the model, which used to take us a very long time to do. So we gradually progressed into using cameras and different types of cameras and then working out how to link those together to make a suite to drive a set of production drawings for arrangements, overviews, however you turn them. So that's basically what today's class is going to be about. So as I said I, I normally end up uh, implementing the advanced deal for people and part of that is doing customization and uh, linking to development projects etc. So just as an intro to this, this was a, a company that we've been working with recently, we did a development project for them and as part of the development project there was a documentation package. So the documentation package was to achieve obviously not only parts, assemblies and bill of material lists but also general arrangement drawings, uh, plans, elevation sections and details. So uh, this company hadn't really used cameras or drawing processes before so we obviously had to create everything from scratch, review what they did. So in this process I'm basically showing you, this was actually a video that I did for the client just to show him what we'd created where he could press one button and get uh, some drawings out from the system from the cameras that he had created in the system. And the content of the drawings is controlled by obviously the prototype that's used, the style that's used and more importantly the camera that's used in the model was actually linking it all together. So depending on what you wanted to do you'd pick a particular camera type to draw a particular thing and then we linked it together into a process suite. So the aim of the class today as I said is to try and explain that to people, uh, try and show that. I mean this is a repeat, I did do a similar class a few years ago uh, but since then there's been some changes in the system in the background, in the database structure that's used. Um, also there's been some additional features added in that can make it easier to actually put cameras into the model in li linking with the uh, Project Explorer. So here, just to finish this bit off, I'm just this is one type of uh, isometric drawing, so that was run. So this was just to show the concrete stair on its own, uh, obviously built from advanced steel elements. And it just on a side that showed them that you could still update the drawing even though if you want to remove an element, turn it off, and then it would bring the other detail back in. Um, and then similarly, uh, there was another drawing done with this. And done, I'm going to pick another one in a minute as well, where we have the other isometric camera. So I created another isometric camera <coughs> but just set it up slightly differently and here it's produced a different type of drawing for the isometric camera. We've got one with the stair and there's actually some steel work showing where the stair is. And this one is just showing the railing and, and the concrete stair. So the configurations were different depending on what we drove from the drawing style or what we configured with the relationship between the camera and the drawing style.
So we're going to explain what a camera is in advanced steel, how to place it, position it in the model. Uh, we're also going to go behind the scenes and show you how to create some new types, link it to a process, hopefully then show you how we link this to creating arrangement drawings from the process and the styles, and methods to apply and work with cameras within advanced steel. So we start right at the beginning, what is a camera object in advanced steel? So it's an element that allows you literally to imagine you taking a picture of a view inside the model. So it's like holding your iPhone up and pressing the button and taking a picture looking at a particular area and then you can crop it to see what you want. Um, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, it works reasonably well, there are a few limitations to it. Um, if you can work within those and you can adapt things, you can find it quite flexible in its approach. Um, it can be set you know, by the coordinate system. So we use the UCS in the model, hopefully everybody's familiar with how to use the coordinate system. Um, obviously you can adjust that to a rotation, uh, the UCS, and then you can do a uh, camera at UCS and it will set it to that. And there's a bunch of UCS tools that are available that come with Advanced Steel anyway, which makes it easier for you to set the UCS relative to objects, etc. So the system comes with some camera types installed. There's standard ones, overviews, node, uh, intersection, and I think none, and roof, I think are the other couple that are in the system. Now all these are placed inside the database and they enable they have various elements in place which enable you to create drawings from these. Uh, you can click on them and you can set the type and then you type in the description field what you want and you can set the style underneath and the scale. And typically they work with bulk standard processes which are available in the system. Now that does depend on which install you're in. Um, there's been a lot of work done in the USA. Uh, I think uh, Australia has some in uh, we partially did it in the UK, um, it's before it, uh, but not a lot has changed uh, in recent years in certain builds. So you might have to put some of these steps in place if they don't already exist, or you might see them already in your system and this will hopefully give you a bit of background as to what they are. So we sort of start with how you sort of place the camera in the model. As I said, it works with the UCS. This was the original method that we used. Uh, you set the coordinate system where you want it. Set a snap option. If you put the UCS where you actually physically want the camera in the model, you can just click on the zero, zero point and it will place the middle of the center of the camera at that point. Uh, you can pick them up and you can move them. You can use the AutoCAD uh, rotate copy tools. Uh, so you can even place a camera and if you decide you want to turn it round, you can actually turn it around to the opposite direction or any rotation you want or even turn it upside down. You can do anything with it and actually what the big advantage with that is the view will adjust to what you adjust the camera to. So even though um, manually you would you, you could create views in advanced steel but then they'd sort of their location would become fixed in the model. There was a way to offset them and move them but it was always difficult to actually see what you were doing unless you drew a bunch of outline of geometry of where you wanted them. So I find it slightly easier to work with the cameras in that method. Um, the second method was one that came in a couple of years ago, which was um, where they used a Project Explorer, which is like uh, an element, a tool inside of Advanced Steel that you can break the model down into different views. With this in place, you could uh, set up a view, say on a grid line for an elevation, and then uh, what they did is they added in the option for the camera to be embedded inside the model view and you can just check a box and this will enable you to put the camera to be placed there. Um, th this is a really good addition, uh, it works quite well now in the, in the latest version and um, it gives you the option just to structure your model using your model views and then just tick a box and get a camera, get a, literally get a drawing out on that view that you've created. So typically I, I find this works quite well if you're working with a model and you're trying to have a strategy to produce a series of drawings at the end we're trying to do a bit of pre-engineering, pre, pre pre-planning to what you want to achieve. Um, my main tip here is if you're going to place it manually, make sure you set the UCS. Uh, it just makes it easier to work with and the camera always aligns to the UCS. You always end up looking down the Z-axis.
So we're sort of looking at here, this is so you break down the model views. So this is using the model views in the system. Um, the, the way this works is like you use the Project Explorer. Um, hopefully everybody's seen that and is familiar with that tool. It's, a, it's a button and normally it's on the home ribbon tab, uh, first button on the left hand side. If you press it it will appear in the, inside your advanced deal. And with that what you can do is you can uh, sort of press it, come up if you go select model view and it will come up with four options. Grid line, one point UCS, uh, one UCS depth front and rear and a joint box. And each one of these have slightly different parameters to set up but fundamentally they create a box or a view that you can uh, see around in the model and what they do is they turn off elements of the model. So by pressing that it will create a view on the grid line, I sort of create the view, I name it and then I can use the light bulb to isolate the elements in the model and that, that, that was a really good way of like breaking down models that got really complicated. Uh, you could just see particular areas, you can set them up like at either end of a building, so if you want to copy something from one end of the building to the other, you could have the you know the, the grid A and then, I don't know, grid, grid Z at the other end and you could actually put the two on and just see that those two parts of the building the rest of the building is turned off. So quite a useful tool. And as part of that method, I use this, I basically create my model views inside my, inside my model in line with sort of how I'm going to do my plans, you know, plans, elevation sections, and even isometric views, and even local detail views can be set up to work like this. So what you do to actually put the camera into this originally, this is method one, um, you would sort of double double click uh, over the name to activate the view. So if you double left click over the name, it activates the view, it turns it on and it rotates the view and it actually puts the UCS at the origin. So with the UCS at the origin, then you can actually just insert a camera using the zero zero point and because you're looking down the UCS, the camera gets placed at that position. You can then go in and set the type of camera that you want to use and the parameters associated with it. Uh, this method still works now, uh, it worked before and I still use it now, it's still, it's still there in the system. Uh, you can you can manually place a camera as well. Obviously, you don't need to link it to a model view or have a model view turned on. Uh, you can just set the UCS. But this works quite well in the combination. And as I say, I'm like structuring my my model views to work with my GAs. So about 28, 2019 versions. I think they sort of changed the way it worked. They added in a new feature actually into the properties of the model view there's an extra tab came in on the side that we could actually get to the camera properties so they inbuilt the camera into the model view which meant you could just turn it on by selecting the checkbox you could select the type of camera you wanted and then you could select the style if you wanted to and the scale as you could in a normal camera and the advantage of this is you didn't have the camera object so it's shown inside the model but it was going to do a view based upon the model view that you'd set up so this works really well now, uh, I mean it saves you setting up additional cameras, you just again structure your model based upon your grid lines or which are then your model views are coming from that or your elevations or your sections. Uh, so those kind of things work really well uh, and I, I, I do use this now, I think it's really good and you can still add another camera into the same, into the same sort of model view itself and produce a different drawing type if you want. Uh, this is useful in my country because we do like a hot rolled elevation and then a cold rolled elevation so and each one of those has particular properties to show things and particular labeling strategies so use your model use your project explorer structure your model views in line with your required arrangement drawings so you, you have to sort of create new cameras. Uh, you can do that. You can create a new camera type inside Advanced Steel. But before we sort of leap into doing all that, you need to do some housekeeping. You need to set up your management system. So for those of you familiar with Advanced Steel, Advanced Steel has a management tool system. This is a, a different manager that sits external to Advanced Steel and it controls a lot of the parameters in the background. It gives you access to the database via the table editor. You can manually add stuff in via the system, you can view existing stuff in the system and you can configure what's called a default profile which is basically a series of switches, uh, parameters, 
which can be adjusted to suit particular requirements. Uh, and we'll sort of talk through changing some of those and setting those up and this is the kind of thing that we would sort of do before we started a project as part of an implementation. So as I said these are the basics before you sort of start doing any modification at all in the system and the first bit of this is um, you know Advanced is a database driven system there's a load of settings in the background so before you start doing anything back everything up Normally I do this the first time I install Advanced Steel, I get a new version of it, I install it. Before I even open it or run it, I will copy the entire data set and put it in a backup drive somewhere, on a cloud drive out of the way. So if I do anything wrong, I can always swap it out back to that. And the other part of it is I always configure my, my management tool system. I put author values in, key start values and defaults profiles. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I just, well, I do it and uh, when my team do it, we just decide that it's the best thing to do. Uh, it just helps users find things and you know that you've changed the settings then and you'll know exactly what you're looking for. So an example of this is the author. You can create the author, you can set it in the management tools. You can create a management tools default profile as well and help set it in there. And I just find these kind of things just help when you're migrating from one version to the other. So if you've got an author value, you've got a management tool profile, you can copy them across from one to the other. So in this case, I'm just showing that we've created an author in the system. I was actually doing a plant project, I think, and I was just working with someone doing plant and advanced steel. So I use this as an example here where I created something specific that said AS plant just so that if I added some stuff in, so I obviously added some camera types in for them to work in advanced steel, and obviously I was using that as a process to actually create all the drawings outputs from the system and linking it to particular drawing styles and particular templates. So very important, I would always recommend that you do that. So the other part of that is the defaults profile. So what you should do is create your own defaults profile in Advanced Steel. So you can copy a new copy or one or duplicate it, or you can create a new one. I'd probably duplicate it. I'm actually showing a new profile here, but you can duplicate it as well. There's a sort of cluster of buttons at the top of the interface when you go to look at it. So you press the defaults and then press new profile. Give it a suitable name. I tend to keep it quite simple. I tend not to leave any spaces or anything in it. Uh, I just put underscores in between it. And the next important thing is to set it current and then that will become the current profile that you work in and then you can go in and change all the parameters in the background behind that. Um, I did do a class uh, three, three or four years ago now on this at AU, uh, it's still out there for people to look at. There's a lot more information in that class that I obviously can't cover today in this class. There's a lot more settings that can be adjusted and set up. So if you want to go and find that, you can you should be able to find that and have a look at it. Uh, always set it current, that's the main thing. If you create a profile, set it current, uh, load, uh, reload the database or start a new session of advanced deal and that will be the current default profile that you're going to use. So um, we're talking about cameras today and obviously there are standard ones in the system and I would like to sort of talk about creating new types of cameras. So I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through creating a new camera type and I'm actually going to call it that just for today's session you don't have to call it that you can call it anything you like but and you can create different ones you know I'm just walking you through the steps that I've done to create one for this uh, presentation today so what you need to do is uh, you can do this by the table editor in the uh, management tools or you can use the SQL studio um, it's, it's, it's up to you. Um, Advanced Steel changed its database structure a couple of years ago, its database engine. It was using Access. Uh, it now uses SQL. Uh, some people struggle with the SQL. Um, I mean, it's a bit different to Access, um, but you can get in via the table editor as well. Uh, that's quite easy actually as well, and it's quite good because it has a little filter. So if you know what you're looking for, you can filter it down quite quick. So sometimes I use that to find things if I can't remember where it is, and then I actually go into SQL and edit it in there. Um, so what we're going to do here is if you, if you add something in, you, you, you just create the name, uh, the key value for it, and then you create its run name. If you have a double barreled name, what I do is make sure you put a space in it. Don't leave a gap because it doesn't work then. Uh, always put an underscore between it. Um, and it will, it will then work. It will add it into the system. 
and just just pop your author entry in at the end um, it will come in when you do it in the management tools it actually drops down you can put it in through the table but if you've got to type it in through SQL you normally end up having to type it in uh, I'll put some links in there now obviously that's where it is in the UK system uh, the folder structure in advanced steel is quite uh, tiered now so you might want the US system or the Australian system or the international system or if you're in a different country again it will be a different language folder but obviously all my work's been based upon the GBR for this presentation today so the, the second part of this is to add a model role so if you create a new camera type you actually need to create a model role for it and that's actually used to identify it inside the model and then also to identify it inside the drawing style system so it's the same kind of thing you can do it in the sequel i'm showing images here from the sequel but you can get to it via the management tool system in the table editor um, it's quite important to remember uh, to put this in properly uh, if you're going to put it in, make sure that you put the name in correctly, uh, put the new name in with the underscore under it, um, and then it will appear in the list. It will also make it appear under the camera type. If you just put the camera in, you probably won't see it properly when it comes in. So you do need to do the cameras first, then model rolls, and then you'll actually see it in the model when you create it. Uh, I do tend to make it again, I put my own author in, uh, make sure the run name's right, etc. So I'm just going to walk through doing those couple of bits in this uh, in this video here. So um, I, I did a presentation a couple of years ago, to be honest, and I had a few problems because my computer actually died um, literally as I finished the presentation. So um, I, I have pre-recorded a lot of stuff for today's presentation. Hope to get a bit of time at the end of today if we can get. We should be able to get through this first bit, and I should leave a bit for Q and A at the end. And uh, if I, I might get a chance to show a few things live, so it's all set up and. Uh, it's just good my practice now is to record what I do <laughs> so what I've done here is I've obviously created a new camera in the model and uh, I'm just showing you me using it here so I'm typing in the description field what I want to call it and I'm actually going to go and pick a style so depending on which system you're in which country version you're in you'll get different styles you get different drawing style processes or different styles in under that system um, obviously if you're in the USA you'll have imperial scales different settings different countries but the, the principle is the same no matter which country so here I'm just showing you I've used the management tool system I've gone into that and I'm, I'm just going to use the filter at the bottom of here so I've loaded the databases so I'm just typing in camera so I can see where they are so as I said camera types and you can see the new one that I've added in under there okay so it was already added into the system but all you did is uh, to get to it is what I said you just use the, the table editor and then the the other part of this is I'll probably I'm just looking to see which one I've set as the default so I'm trying to find the default entry here so sometimes just by typing camera I can go through and you shorten down what's what you can see in the system so what I've done here is I set the new camera selection so if I create a new camera manually in the model it starts with that one it says new camera So here I'm just looking at the same sort of thing and I've gone into the SQL database. So I'm using the SQL Management Studio to get into this and see it. I'm using similar tools to filter down what I want because there's like hundreds of tables, hundreds of databases and things like that. So it's not for the faint hearted but you can find quite a bit of help on uh, uh, Autodesk help pages under Advanced Deal how to get into the SQL. Um, I do use it, I find it a lot easier. I use it with Excel as well, I copy stuff in and paste it in and things like that. Uh, it was a bit of a change, uh, a lot of people didn't uh, didn't realise that. Uh, when it changed it became a little bit complicated for them. Uh, so there's options, there's options there available. So that's the first couple of steps done. So the next bit is to sort of create a process behind this and sort of linking it to the drawing style so we've created the camera object now we've got it in the model we can model it but we can't get it to a, a, a drawing process so those of you that have used advanced still understand what I mean by a drawing process this is a method of pressing a button and it will actually create a drawing process from a selection rule so here what we need to do is we need to create a selection rule for the new camera that we've created so I've created one here in the database and obviously I'm linking it to the camera object so this is a particular database in the system it's called Asta Detail Base uh, again I've put all the information on the slide here in front of you again it would based on your country code as to where it's stored but it's under the kernel folder 
uh, data and in there you just just type for it you'll find it if you want to use the like I said the management tool table editor you'll probably find it quicker and all you need to do is go in and copy an existing one and create a new one and make sure that you use the correct name for it so if you've got a double barrel name under the under the sort of the, what needs to go in the text field to drive it okay you need to put an underscore you need to put that name in it what you actually physically see in the interface in the process manager you'll see the the run name text uh, make sure you put a unique key key value in uh, don't put one the same as the existing one it doesn't like things like that try and uh, sort of put it out at a value that you know and you recognize so this again uh, I've got a little video here where I'm going to sort of walk through doing that in the system so I'm actually going to do it through the table editor first of all so we just uh, load the databases So I'm filtering it down here, I'm just typing in detail process selection. And from that I knew where it was, and obviously I sort of knew that. So what I tend to do is just look for one that already exists. So you can see them here and you can copy it. Okay, and then I'll, I'll go and use something like Excel. and I. I I just find it easier sometimes just to copy it out into something else and work out what I want to do with it. Um, and I, I'll copy maybe copy bits from different parts of the system and put them into a spreadsheet and then just make up what I need or in just have that visual prompt in front of me. Uh, I just find it slightly easier to do it in here because you're not actually typing it directly in the database, you're actually sort of creating it right first and then copying it into the database. And there's a few limitations using the, the table editor as well it doesn't always like to put everything in all at once uh, so you sort of have to copy bits and pieces in so and if I'm using to be honest if I'm using SQL I'll probably create a load of them outside in the Excel table and then copy them all in at once um, so it's just finding ways to work with the system I'm not a computer techie I don't write scripts and stuff for SQL so and I personally just trying to find ways that I think people that could work with it on a day to day basis that don't have all that knowledge could actually do this and use it and create it for themselves and don't have to be a, a programmer or an analyst to understand how to do this. So the important bit is to change the name so I'm just changing the name here so I'm, I'm going to make sure that it's, um, it's the name um, so new underscore camera because that's the type of camera that we've created in the system and you probably find that you'll need to create an all process and a selected process. All means it will do every camera of that type in the model. Selected means it will be based upon the selection. So if you create a selector camera and it happens to be that type, then it will work. If you select a bunch of cameras and select one accidentally the wrong type, it will only work to the camera type that you've selected. So here we're going to go back into the system here and we can go to the last and we can see the one we're going to go back in now add it back in here so I'm putting a key value in and then I'm going to use going to flip between that and Excel and that's it here copy the lines in. I just like I said earlier on I just find it a slightly easier method to do this uh, I just think it's easier for people to manage it because then they've already put it in place so they don't have to worry about copying it into the database and then deleting it and stuff try and get it right first of all so that's the all one put in place and I'm putting a key value in for the next one so I'm doing the selected version now new camera so it's always I tend to pair them up tend to do both of them at the same time one after the other uh, just makes it easier in the database when you're looking for them later on and just put the author on the end as well make sure that you do set the author to your one so that you know it's yours because uh, if you come back to this several months later you think did I put that in or not put it in if you put your author against it then you think oh yeah it was me who did that uh, this will get migrated across now I think I uh, did some migration for people uh, from uh, into 2018 uh, from 2018 to 2019 and uh, this this table has been picked up in the migration now it wasn't before but it is now 
So it looks a little bit painful, but this is the kind of thing you end up doing. Uh, if you put the time and effort in, it does it does sort of pay off in the long run. Um, I wouldn't expect every user to do this, so it's more like you know you get someone who runs, runs your system for you. They should be able to manage this and uh, do this kind of stuff. Obviously, when you select the author because you've had it in the system, you, you get it from the drop down list. So we we'll sort of come on to the next bit. So the drawing style model object. So we actually need to create a what's called a model object in the drawing style manager to actually link the new camera type to the drawing system and link it to the process system. Um, you might find in some systems that this is structure is sort of in place. It might not be in place uh, quite the same as this, or it might be buried, buried under something else. But fundamentally, what you're doing is you're creating something that links to the model uh, model role to the model object, and the model object is used inside the drawing style system to link to the drawing process system. Um, if you do do this, make sure that your management tool defaults are set up and your author is set up because it will create line entries in the database in the background. I tend to do it through the drawing style manager. You can add stuff in via the line entries in the table, but Unless you really know what you're doing, it can be a bit tricky because it puts it in a couple of tables now. So probably better to do it through the the actual uh, drawing style manager itself. You do need to do this to get it to work. So again, we're just gonna I'm just gonna walk through that here. So I'm just opening the uh, drawing style manager. So obviously click on the user part of the system. The user part of the system is where I tend to make all my changes for here. Um, obviously in the UK system, we didn't actually have anything listed under cameras. So I actually created the, the group for it as so six, but I knew there was a camera object already in the system. Uh, so I actually moved it for the present, for this purposes of this presentation. So I wasn't hiding that from anybody. I just thought I'd show that I was moving it. Um, so that gave me the start point and then use copy do not use deep copy Use copy when you copy something do not use deep copy just use copy Okay, that's the important thing here and give it a new name So I, I probably said new cameras or something so it's this you know camera new camera type or something so it's Everything works in alphabetical order. I think so uh, it's sometimes it's better to type so they all list directly underneath each other so the object type, so this is the element inside the model is a camera. So we leave it set as camera and then we're looking for the model role that we created. So this model object is linking it to the model role. So in this case, it's new camera. So remember we created the model role in the previous part of the presentation today. Okay, so we're going to come back in the model now, and we're just going to look at that inside the management system. So the table editor system. So I'm going to just show you what's going on in the background. So here we're just going. So this is the couple of tables, the entry. So that's the group that it was in. So that's the group. So we're also just copying the bitmap image. The bitmaps get installed by the DLLs that come from the installer of Advanced Deal. I tend not to worry about that, it's just like linking an image so it sort of makes it fill it out properly, so uh, that's the way I do that. So you can see where it's been added in down the bottom there as well. So there's a couple of tables. Uh, this is actually what makes the model object lines in the actual drawing styles. When I say it's probably easier that you just do it through the, the drawing uh, style manager rather than coming and try and add it in the tables here. So this next part of this is we need to create a process. So a process is, is how it actually 
m makes the drawing. So this is like links a bunch of stuff together. And if you don't already have the structure in place in the system for cameras, you'll need to create all the basic stuff for this in place, put the folders in place, etc. But for this, I'm assuming that cameras are already built in as a process table. All I'm doing is going to add to that. And there's probably some existing steps in place in there already for that. Again, if you use this part of the system, do not use deep copy, just use copy. Okay, and if you create a selected one, you need to create an all one as well. Okay, and basically it will create an entry in the system and we, we manipulate all the stuff inside the actual process step itself to give us the required output by changing the type and all that. And this will link back to the, the detail process selection table, which is the line you will see that we will actually select the one that we created earlier on. And normally they tend to be based upon sheet size. So depending on which country you're in, it'll depend on which size they're created in. So again, I'm just going to run through that in this little little video here. So again, I did copy, um, and obviously I'm just going to go all. I'm going to give it, I'm just going to say new camera all or something. I would imagine what I type in here. You can make the syntax whatever you want, and also you can't have spaces at the front there. So if you get a warning message like that, you just need to have no gap at the front. So obviously I'm working on an A1 size because I don't want to change the sheet. But what I'm going to do is create a new step now. So that's the main definition, but I need to create a new step. I don't want to alter the existing step. I want to leave that as it is. And I want to change this one. So the syntax can be whatever you want, but I try and if I decide on something, I try and keep the theme of that throughout what I'm doing so that I make sure that then they all sort of list them in order. Did make a little mistake there, but I'll show you. You can come back and all things like that. <laughs> so here, this is the detail process selection rule that we actually entered into the table. So I need to select that. I need to go and find it in the system. Okay, so it should be listed in here. You might need to scroll down to find it. Or scroll up in this case, all camera, new camera type. I tend not to alter anything else to do with that. The selection arrangement. Obviously, the file name selector, the other elements inside here can all be adjusted. The file name selector controls the drawing naming and the prototype. The bottom bit there is the detail style map. That will come into play later on, and we'll have a, a little review of that and explain how that works as well. So what it does, it creates the step. And actually what it does, it actually puts it in under the system. It actually created it in another part of the system, lower down in the, in the tree structure that we're looking at here. Obviously, you would need to create one for each particular sheet size if you wanted to do different drawing sizes. And obviously, if you're in the USA, it would be a different different type of style uh, sizes. So here, we're just looking under the actual physical step itself. We can see that this has been created in the bottom half of the system. And I'm just adjusting the name here because I noticed I typed it wrong. You can create your own group, so if you want to group the cameras together under something else and give them a slightly different name, which is what we do if we tend to work for companies, we tend to pull that out into a little folder of their own. So here, I'm just going to show you looking in the background here, so where it's sort of created the stuff in the table editor, so in the database again. So I'm using the table editor, it's just because everybody has this. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily look at it myself and this, I'd probably be using the SQL thing. So again, I, I filtered it down. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of trying to find the right word here. So I'm putting process in, and it's um, I know it's going to go to the current add-in. So I can see here, there's obviously the one for cameras. And you'll notice a couple of things about images there. If you create your own one, you need to create your own image buttons. Uh, you need to add your own images in. So this is the line at the bottom. That's the one we actually typed it in. 
okay and you get a bit of text with it in there which you can alter you can alter the help text actually inside the drawing process manager but you can also do it in here so I'm just going to alter this slightly so uh, So with, with that in place, that sort of puts the, the camera process in place for the basics, right? So that'll sort of move us on from there. And then the next bit is we need to try and link it to a style. Okay, so this is linking to the other part of the system. We're in the drawing process manager. We're now going to link into the drawing style manager. And for that to work, we need to create what's called a style map, a detail style map. And we need to create one for cameras. Now, it might exist in your system depends on again on which country you're in if it's not then you'll probably need to create a new one so it's quite easy to see it they're listed right down the bottom under the user part of the system and they're configured to work and link to particular styles in the system under particular object types so object types I mean model objects in the system if you remember the model object links back to the model role which then links back to the camera object so this is where we put all those little bits together and then what we're going to do is link it to a particular style and again, my tip is, do not use deep copy, just use copy. Also, just watch out if there's any script dialogues in there. Sometimes if you copy something, there's a little script dialogue hidden under the little script button. You need to clean that out because it might actually stop what you're doing if you copied it from somewhere else. All right, and you create a series of these, so you add them into the style map. So if you've added a bunch of camera types into the model, you add a bunch of these into here under the style map so it knows what to do, and you can set the drawing style different depending on which camera type you select. So by creating a camera that says elevation, you might have a particular style for doing elevations. For hot rolled steel, you'd pick that. Or you might have an elevation cold rolled camera type and that would be done to and that'd have a different style. So you'd set it under this style map so that the, the user didn't have to worry about selecting the style when they put the camera in place. The camera is just produced, the camera is positioned and then it's used to produce the actual output based upon the style that's selected, pre-selected for the user. So again, I'm just gonna uh, walk through this uh, process, you know, as sort of linking it together. So go, we go into the uh, Drawing Process Manager, Output tab on the ribbon at the top. And I'm gonna copy an existing one. I'm gonna give it a new name. Obviously, if it's for a particular company or a division of a company, you, you can put a different name in there. You can name it whatever you like. Um, I tend to change it to work with general arrangement drawings because the drawing styles can be grouped under what uh, drawing types are going to be used for. Uh, even though I copied it from an existing one, okay, I'm just going to go up here um, <clears throat> and I'm going to change it. So I'm linking to the model object first of all, which links to the camera type and the model role. And then I'm going to pick the style. So depending on which country you're in will depend on what styles are available and what you need to use. Now, obviously, I'm using a UK style, so we can pick stuff to do with that. So I'm, I'm probably going to pick a 3D one by looks of it here. So you can add more than one. So uh, in this case, I'd only created one, but later on you'll see that there's a, a style map with loads of these added in. And basically, you need this is the this is the key. This is this links the drawing style manager and the drawing process manager together, and links it obviously all the different camera types in the model, which are then used in another thing called a drawing process suite to actually produce a series of outputs. Or you can just produce drawings individually because then you set up a bunch of different drawing processes in the system for different camera types. So all we did there was we just changed it to make sure that the, the style map was looking at that for actually creating the output from the camera object in the model.
So another bit that always gets overlooked is how to make sure that the camera actually appears in the drawing process palette. Um, it's sort of got a bit tricky in the last few years. You need to make sure the checkbox is ticked inside to show it in the palette. So obviously we're, uh, the database where this is stored is actually in the uh, Aster adding current. So, but if you do it through the manager, it's a bit easier to see it. So just select the uh, drawing process manager button, go under the camera part of the system, pick the camera and just make sure that the checkbox is ticked at the front. Okay, so you need to make sure that checkbox is ticked. What you also need to do is if you're in a current session of advanced steel, you need to actually close advanced steel then. And before you close it though, make sure that you close the palette. Okay, so close the drawing process palette first. Once you've closed the palette, then you go and reboot Advanced Steel, and then if you check the box, it should then show the new button under that new palette when you open it up again via the Drawing Process Manager button. Sorry, the Drawing Process button. So again, I'm just going to walk through doing that here. So we can see the new types down the bottom there, and uh, we can see they're not checked. So I'm just going to check them. Uh, I'm going to apply those settings, just go OK. So I'm closing down the Drawing Process Manager. You can see I've still got the palette open, and if I change it, I'm just going to close that down now. I've closed it. Right, I'm going to save the changes to my model. Uh, I'm going to exit basically my uh, this, uh, this uh, version of, or this session of Advanced Steel. I'm obviously rebooting to a new one. So it just takes a few minutes. I'm actually uh, recording all this live. So it's just opening now. So I'm going to just open from a template here. So obviously when I've got this open, so now I need to go to the drawing process button. Now you can get to it from the home tab, but I'm going to go to the output tab and show you where it is. So just press the drawing process button and you'll see the palette appear. Toggle it to the user part of the system. And if you toggle it to cameras, you'll see down the bottom here, they're actually listed. Now you can turn the other ones off as well, so that if you customise the system just to only show what you want, you can actually create your own button, your own group as well in the system and add icons in and all kinds of things. So that's another sort of level of customization as well. So how to actually apply this uh, in the system. So you're going to sort of. So w this is how we use our new camera. Okay. So the first thing you do is obviously create a camera object in the model. Okay. So what does that do? So that gives you access to set the camera type. Okay. So you set the camera type that you want to use. That links to a model object. Model object was linked to the model role. Okay. So this is setting the camera type. The model object is actually linking to the drawing process system. So the drawing process manager. Okay, you can actually use the detail style map to actually link to the camera type to stop you having to set the drawing style in the system. Okay, so just by putting the camera type in the model, putting in the detail style map entry for the camera type, it's linked via the model object, linked via the model role, linked by the camera type, you don't actually have to set the style under the camera. Doesn't mean you can't set the style, if you set the style, it will actually override what is actually being driven by the detail style map. So we're just going to run through that again. So obviously I've activated the model view. <coughs> I'm actually going to go in, I'm actually going to use the inbuilt one here, so I'm going to use the camera that's inbuilt into the model view. I'm going to select the tab on the left, I'm going to check the box at the top, and that activates the view. 
So now I can go in and I can set my camera type. Type in my in the description field. This is the title that comes up into the drawing view. I can leave it like that. I can set the style if I want, but I don't want to in this case. I'm just going to leave it. So the model view, you can then actually go in and run the process. So if I run all camera types new, okay, I've only got that one in the model, so it will just run through the standard, whatever I've set up in the process to create it. If I had more than one, it would probably run more than one drawing. But in this case, it's probably only going to run one because I've only put one in the model because I was doing this as a test. Then what I can do is I can actually select the model view and then there's an option on the right click shortcut menu to go show camera detail. And what it did is it was linked to a particular style to give a particular output. Uh, to be honest, I didn't do anything else. I just, I just linked it to a standard style. This is a style that's used in the UK. I didn't change the border templates or anything else. But you could configure all those additional options if you need to. So just to recap the uh, camera workflow, so style and selection management is controlled, working for the cameras for arrangement drawing. So create the camera in the model, okay, that links to a drawing process with links to the style map, the style map links to the camera type, links to the drawing style, which links back to the drawing style manager. It's all linked by the camera type, and the key to it all is the detail style map. It links the two managers together. And this enables you to create a bunch of cameras of a particular type to do a particular type of drawing output. So again, if you structure your drawings, like plans, assembly, uh, plans, uh, elevations, uh, isometric views, by creating a particular camera of a particular type, you can link it to a particular style output and ultimately you can then create a sequence of drawings in an order. Now that doesn't stop you from doing anything uh, off, off grid or varied or different from that or adding additional views in or things like that or even doing it manually. You can still do it manually. It's just a way to create a series of drawings in a set order to help drive drawing production. So this comes into the next bit which is automated production. So I, I say this not tongue in cheek, but obviously I'm working within the limits of what I can do within Advanced Steel and how it works. Okay, it, it, you, you might need to do some additional bits, extra bits to this as well to get exactly what you want. But I'm managing the system as best as I can to the current ability of the system. Um, I've not found any further improvements in this system in the last few years, but at least the functionality still remains. And I think this is a really good way if someone's trying to press you for a set of drawings and you don't have a lot of time, if you've done the legwork in as you've been going along, it will make you make it easier for you to press the button to get some drawings out quite quickly for them. So typically drawings consist of plans, elevation sections, and isometrics. Um, so we can use the advanced steel to create these automatically. We use a thing called the drawing process suite. This tool links together a bunch of singular operations into a sequence of drawings. So the approach, we create all the camera types in the model, probably use model views, set the options under there, or manually place a camera, uh, use the camera node options, things like that. Several different ways to create a camera inside Advanced Deal. It's all linked in the background by the detail style map, and all the processes have been created for the all process drawings from the camera types. And then we link this under what's called the process suite. So the elements, you need to have the camera types placed in the model, okay? You can use the inbuilt ones in the model views or manually place them. You need to have a style map in place before you do this and then you can create the drawing process suite. The process suite can have a number of line entries created in it. It doesn't just have to have one or two. Uh, and you put the sequence you put them in is the sequence that it will process it. It just reads from the top to the bottom. Okay, so how you put a sequence in is how it will output the drawings in that sequence, providing that the camera object is found in the model.
So you create this to define a series of processes together. So where do you find it? Output tab on the ribbon, drawing process button, press that, opens up the suite. I've created one here which is, was done for a plant project, so plant arrangement drawings done in a particular order. So you need to make sure all the camera processes are created first of all by the drawing process manager before you try and do this. If they're not in place you won't be able to do this. But we've done all the foundation steps to get to that, to get to this point. So here, I'm going to just run through this video here, so I'm actually going to create a suite here. So I've gone into the drawing process suite by the ribbon. Um, I'm actually going to copy, don't keep copy, just copy. So it's a new suite, so you press the new button and go, and you change the name to whatever you want. So I obviously called this AU camera suite. In fact, still, everything is a copy of something in the drawing style system. Um, don't ask me which came first, the chicken or the egg, because I don't know in this case. But I've only ever managed to do it by copying stuff. Now, I'm, I'm cleaning out what's already in there, and then I'm going to change probably one of these to a different rule. So when I click in the dialog there, it actually, it's actually now looking into the drawing process manager. It's looking into the lines in the database there. And I'm doing the same thing with the other ones. I'm, I'm going to go down under here. And you'll find that obviously when I when I actually got around to doing this, I'd gone in the background and I'd created a load of different uh, types of cameras in the system to link to do different things. So the first couple there, the the base camera was to uh, do the the local detail. I think the other one was the anchor plan was to do the 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 overall layout. And I keep adding them in. Now obviously I've got elevation cameras for hot rolled, cold rolled. Um, and this is slightly unique to my country, uh, I mean the reason I did this actually was because I was doing a cold roll drawing style course as well. Uh, I had actually done it for that and I thought I'd, thought I'd replicate it for AU. So I actually went back through it and created it all again. So it takes a, a few minutes to set this up and uh, I just wanted to show you this is, this is me actually doing it. Alright, I'm not putting any tricks or anything here. I've done all the steps in the background to get to this point. And then in, uh, when we've done this, we can actually use this to process the drawings and create a series of drawings from the model. So I even, I even have camera types called Sketch, which is where someone asked me to do some cameras which had a different border. Uh, so it said SK in the in the drawing name and things like that and the naming of the file and the, the title of the drawing and all this kind of stuff. So I used a different prototype for that. Uh, and I used a, a very generic type drawing style so that basically it would capture everything in the model that they were trying to do a, a view round. So again, so this is the workflow. Create the camera types, create the model roles. Define the process entries, create the model objects, create the drawing processes, detail style map links it all together, add it to the palette, repeat steps one to seven if you want to do more of them, create a drawing process suite that gives you access to the document manager after you've run the drawings, select the drawing and review the drawing. This is the basic workflow but you can use it with the standard cameras in the system or you can adapt them all right but that's how it works all right and all the bits that got to that point was to get there was just to get to that i know it seems a bit laborious but it's honestly it's not once you've done it once and you can you can transfer it from one person to the other it will migrate across So what I just wanted to show was another little thing as well, that sometimes people uh, create a new group in the system under the Drawing Process Manager or even under the Drawing Style Manager and they don't know how to add in um, the images. So I tend to create the images using Paint or Paint 3D, whatever they call it nowadays. Same as PNG files, I probably found an image on the web somewhere, copied it and then I manipulated it. I create an, an active and an inactive button. 
Um, model views, uh, I use model views and I use the inbuilt option now, it works really well. You can manually place cameras as well and sometimes it helps to use both, not just one. Okay, to get different views on the same elevation, particularly if you've got to show different content on the same elevation. So like in my country, we put up the hot rod still work first and then we come along and put the cold rod up afterwards and they use two different drawings to do that with. The marking plan or the marking elevation for the cold rod has different mark numbers on it than the hot rod elevation. Try and pre-plan what you're doing. Uh, try and plan your GAs in line with your model views or your model views in line with your GAs. Try and have a thought of where you're trying to get to. Normally you're coming from something to something and going through a model to get to that process. So I tend to structure my model views. It helps me work in the model because then I can read data from a drawing. I don't always get a model. Even though everybody's supposed to be working in a the model these days, we tend to get drawings still. Um, so we tend to work on an elevation or a floor level at a time. Use the Project Explorer. I do find it very helpful. It helps you work quite a lot easier inside Advanced Steel when you're looking at complex models. So normally in the, in the live session of this, so this would be like a, a Q and A thing where I would ask any questions of people. Obviously my contact email address is there if you want to reach out to me and ask me anything. Uh, and what I was going to do when I was doing this in the live session is I would run a video which actually shows me actually creating some drawings in the background which people could watch and ask some questions about. So I'm using the process suite here, I just selected the process suite and I just pressed the button. Well, this is going to create about 20 drawings actually and I think uh, that, that, that process probably takes about um, five minutes. Okay so this is normally where I say when I'm training people to do this, go and make a cup of coffee and come back. So the, the idea of this was just to give a bit of background into how we do it and actually to see the fruition of everything that I'd done through to get to this point for the class for AU. Also the, the class is a bit longer in AU so I'd allowed a bit of extra time to go back and show a live session after this as well. So you, you can see it processing here and to be honest I'm probably just going to skip through a little bit of this and just keep going. So I just want to get it where it opens it, so I can sort of I can whiz through this if I need to. So it will it will get to the end of this, and I say it does take a few minutes, and then I'll come into the document manager. So I'm opening the document manager. So basically, I've processed all those drawings that are sat in front of you, and all I did was press one button. Uh, be honest, I haven't used a lot of drawing customization. All I did was set up some stuff in the background to get it to work uh, to drive the output drawings. And these are using standard styles that we use in the UK. I've even used standard templates from Autodesk. All those other bits can be customized as well, but to go through that in today's presentation would be too much. I mean, there's been some courses done over the years on that. Some, there's quite a lot of video information out there. And to be honest, this is what we do. We tend to end up changing the output depending on which client wants what and depends on the industry type as well. This one's based around a steel frame. We started off with a staircase with railings in it. I think when I did the, the class before I was using, I was working on a project for a company in America and I used that. I asked them if I could use to show the, what we'd created from that. So uh, I thought this was a good contrast today to just show structural steel work. I've linked it into working with companies that work plant as well, plant and steel as well. So all these entries have been created just by everything that's been set up in the background in the system, even detailed views. So normally I'd do a live session, I was going to just show, leave a little bit of time for doing a, a live review just to talk, walk through people and again just to show them that it had actually been created and it still existed on my system. Uh, the final slide was just to offer the fact that Autodesk, obviously we're on the Autodesk marketplace. Uh, I work for Greytech, uh, I work as a, obviously an application engineer, technical consultant, CSM. I, I, I have all these, all these job titles but fundamentally I'm a consultant. If you want access or help from Greytech, you can find them on the Autodesk Services Marketplace. 
just like to say thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful thank you